Hey Warriors, this video is for U.S. government and this is a lesson about the Public Defender's Office and it's a follow-up to our study of the Gideon versus Wainwright Supreme Court case. So we know at the end of Gideon versus Wainwright that the court, the Supreme Court, decided that he should get a new trial because his Sixth Amendment right to have the right to uh, the assistance of counsel if he needed it had been denied to him. We also knew uh, as a result of that case, the state of Florida then had to either retry or just plain let go hundreds and hundreds of inmates in the state of Florida who were sitting in jail at that time because their right to an attorney had been denied to them also. So I want to take a look into the public defender's office a little bit uh, in this lesson. And I'm going to, in the description below this video, give you three links to different videos that I'd like you to watch. They're all on YouTube. One is True Believers in Justice, A Young Public Defender's Struggle. The next is Public Defenders, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, which is a comedy politics kind of show on HBO. And then also the third video, Waitlist Grows as Public Defenders Refuse Cases in New Orleans. So these three videos, uh, you'll find a link to, the, link to those videos in the description below this video when you're done watching. The, the things that I want you to pay attention to in this video are the changes that have occurred over time in the public defender's office. Uh, first of all, let's confront the idea that we probably all have an opinion about public defenders to begin with. Public defenders, most people understand, are lawyers who are provided to people who can't afford to hire a lawyer of their own choosing. We also probably have this um, idea in our mind somewhere that if I am a very rich person and I have lots of money and I can hire the very best lawyer that money can buy, I probably have a better chance of being set free at the end of my trial than if I just get whatever lawyer is given to me because I can't afford to hire the one that I would choose. And this sort of attitude about the way justice works in relationship to money in our country has led to an attitude that's pretty widespread that suggests that public defenders are just all bad lawyers. And so I hope one thing that you'll understand through watching these videos is that all public defenders are not just bad lawyers and didn't have anywhere else to go. Uh, the reality is in the legal world, let's suppose that you and I are both students in law school and you are top of the class. You get A's, A pluses on every assignment. You are a rising superstar in the legal profession. And when it gets close to graduation time, you're about ready to graduate law school and take the bar exam, which is a qualifying or a certifying exam for, for lawyers, for attorneys. You have all kinds of big law firms um, chasing after you. They want to offer you a job, okay? And you have your pick of five or six or seven maybe really big, impressive, wealthy law firms. And they're throwing you all kinds of offers, six-figure salaries and signing bonuses and maybe an opportunity to become partner one day to get your name on the sign. Um, and then there's me. I'm also a law student, but I'm the very bottom of our class. And I am not a rising superstar in the legal profession. People look at me and they kind of shake their heads <laughs> I know, hard to believe, right? People look at me and they kind of shake their heads and they're like, you know what? If he manages to make it through law school, he will never ever pass the bar exam. Look at that guy, he's hopeless. But in fact, I do graduate law school and do any of those law firms that are chasing you because you're so impressive and you're top of the class, are any of those law firms offering me a job? No, no, they wouldn't offer me a job if it was the last, if I was the last lawyer on earth. Okay? And I can call their office and try to get an interview all I want. They're going to look at my transcript from law school and say, no, we don't want this guy. He's not very impressive. Okay? And so is it true that sometimes someone like me maybe graduates law school and I do pass the bar exam and I don't have a lot of offers from big, rich law firms. I need to get a job in the legal profession. And I may not have a lot of money to set up my own law practice. Well, sometimes a person like me will go and work 
for the state or for the county, for the public defender's office. And so does that mean that I'm a bad lawyer? Not necessarily. There could be lots and lots of reasons why I didn't do really well in law school. There can be lots and lots of reasons why I didn't impress the people around me, okay? Maybe I had other things going on in my life that prevented me from studying hard. Maybe I was working two jobs and working my way through law school. And maybe you being top of your class, maybe you came from a very, very rich family and you didn't have to worry about bills or working outside of law school. That might impact the way a person performs in school, okay? But um, all that to say, our impression often of the public defender's office is that they hire the leftovers, like me, the leftovers. And the people like you, the superstars coming up in the legal profession, they would never go to work for the public defender's office because can the public defender's office offer you as much money as those huge wealthy law firms? No. Are they gonna offer you a signing bonus? No. Are they gonna offer you the, the opportunity to put your name on the sign one day? No, that's not the way it works when you work for the state. So I want you to pay attention to this thing, that idea that says public defenders are kind of bad lawyers and lawyers that work at law firms they're the good lawyers. The good lawyers are the ones that you could pay for if you could afford it. And the bad lawyers are the ones you get for free. All right. I hope that watching this video or these videos leaves the impression on you that there are some very good lawyers in the public defender's office, committed lawyers, passionate lawyers, lawyers who chose to work in the public defender's office specifically because they believe the Sixth Amendment is important. They believe it's important that everyone have a lawyer when they go to court, even if they can't afford one. Okay, the other thing I want you to notice, especially in the video uh, that talks about the lawyers in New Orleans, I want you to notice that the public defender's office is funded. They get their budget, the money that they operate on, the money that they use to hire and to pay the salaries of lawyers. They get their money through taxes county taxes or state taxes. And you know, taxes are what the government uses to do the things the government needs to do. Federal government, state government, local government. And so one thing I want you to notice is um, in these videos, you're going to begin to see that there's um, a series of different problems that are happening in public defenders offices across the country. And one of them is that they just don't have a lot of money with which to operate. And the reason they don't have the money is because when it comes time for those federal or state or local government agencies, when it comes time for them to sit down and make a budget, this is true at whatever level, regardless of what uh, function of the government is being funded, when it comes down to uh, making a budget, the things that are important to the people making the budget, they get the most money. The things that are really not very important to those people making the budget, well, they get the least amount of money. And you'll see in that New Orleans video, uh, the comments made by one man in the video that say, look, we continue to increase the budget of the police department, the sheriff's department, law enforcement, and yet we decrease the budget of the public defender's office. So there are more people out there making arrests and pulling people into the system, but there are less people there to defend those individuals in court. So I want you to begin to formulate an idea and take some notes and maybe do a little piece of writing at the end of this worksheet. I want you to express your opinion about what's going on in the public defender's office. And if the public defender's office continues to get very disrespectful treatment when it comes time to make the budget, then are people's Sixth Amendment rights really being honored in the process? If I'm in trouble and I never even meet my court-appointed attorney or I meet him or her for 30 seconds or two minutes and 30 seconds, and all they have to say to me is, well, look, if they offered you a plea deal, you probably ought to take it, then is that really really what my Sixth Amendment rights guarantee me. A short consultation, you know, less than five minutes, and my attorney saying, take the deal, take the deal. That's the best you're going to get.
That's not really the assistance of counsel that the Sixth Amendment talks about. So I want you to watch these three videos, and in the end, I want you to answer the question on the worksheet at the bottom. What does all this say about the Sixth Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment, and the Gideon versus Wainwright Supreme Court case? That case was very important at the time. It was instrumental in forming this whole public defender system. But over time, as the public defender's office has seemed to become less and less a priority to the people who make budgets, who assign amounts of money to different government operations, is the Sixth Amendment really being honored or not? So I want you to answer that question after you watch these three videos. That's it for this video. The next video, we'll take a look at another Supreme Court case, but I will see you when the time comes.